Return of the King, The Return of the Jedi, The Return of the MR1. Maybe, maybe that's overdoing it a bit, but you gotta ask yourself, which one of these has Breguet numerals? And what's all this returning about anyway? Well, the Baltic MR01, MR1, I don't know. These watches from Baltic debuted in 2021, and at some point between then and now, they all sold out. I suspect it wasn't long after these watches were announced. And on June 1st of this year, they'll be back in stock and back for sale. Then on first look, I get why these watches have been so popular. These things are attractive and affordable, and they have at least one cool thing that I've never seen before. Baltic watches started only in 2017 in Paris, France, and has really made a good name for itself in the watch world. Baltic makes affordable, vintage-inspired watches with a lot of careful attention to detail. I was impressed by the tri compacts watches that they sent me to review a few months ago. I'm not really into watches that look like they're from another time, but I certainly get the appeal of a watch with classic looks and modern tech. I mean, that basically describes me. Looks old with all the trappings of the modern age. Some facts about the MR1. These are the three dial options for the MR1, silver, blue, and salmon. On leather straps, they cost 545 euro, which comes out to about $590 this month. The watches are 36 millimeters in diameter, 44 millimeters long, and 10 millimeters thick. They use domed hesalite crystals, that's a polymer, 20 millimeter lugs that are drilled, yay, and 30 meters of water resistance. My wrist is seven inches around, and I'm gonna get back to the sizing, but as you're seeing these shots, I want you to have that kind of context. And I think the size of these watches is as integral to their designs as any other aspect of them. And this design is unquestionably classic early to mid 20th century, when men were men and they drank leaded gasoline and wore 30 millimeter watches. Seriously, these 36 millimeter watches would have been considered oversized for dress watches back then. But styles have changed and thankfully leaded gasoline isn't as common as it once was. And so I think the size of these watches is appropriate. A 36 millimeter watch in 2023 is equivalent to a 30 millimeter watch in 1943. Refined, elegant, stylish. And that goes for every design element on these watches. These dials again are thankfully just called silver, blue, and salmon. They all have the same fine texture, which is probably most visible on the salmon dial. Both the silver and the salmon have a metallic finish, while to me it looks like the blue has a bit more of a matte finish. But all of them share the polished Breguet numerals that are missing from both Star Wars and Lord of the Rings, but you'll probably find these numerals on a couple Indiana Jones movies, and that's because, like the size of these watches, these numerals speak of a very specific time and style. And so do these leaf hands. I heard one other reviewer call these Dauphine hands. No, these are leaf hands. And then there's these small seconds. I can't recall a mid-century dress watch with a small seconds at 7.30. Maybe they exist, but I can't think of one. Much more common was to have these small seconds at 6 o'clock or 9 o'clock. And I interpret this as just the slightest nod to modernity. It's kind of just saying, yeah, this looks like an old watch, but look closer. You probably won't find this asymmetry on a watch from the 50s. The same goes for the exhibition case backs. These didn't show up until the 1990s, and I'm glad these watches have the movements on display. These watches are powered by the Hangzhou Caliber 5000. Apologies for my pronunciation. The only tonal language I'm comfortable with is my dad voice in phrases like, you did what with my watch box? This movement is the thing in this watch that I've never seen before. An affordable micro rotor movement from a manufacturer that I've never heard of. Micro rotors are rare at any price, but below $5,000, I don't think I've ever seen that. One advantage to a rotor like this is that it doesn't add to the thickness of the movement. It also doesn't visually obscure the movement either, which is cool because these is pretty. I assume all of this finishing is done automated by machines, but that's totally fine with me. Perlage, stripes, lots of blued screws, even gold-filled lettering. It all looks really nice. How will it function over the years? Honestly, I can't tell you. But I do know that Baltic has a two-year warranty on these watches, which should be enough time to make you feel comfortable trying out these movements. 
The crystal of these watches is another component that is worthy of some questioning, maybe. These crystals are made of hesalite. That's basically a plastic. Hesalite was used in watches for a long time, and Omega still uses it on some moon watches. But it will scratch easier than sapphire. And those same properties that make hesalite more scratchable also make it pretty easy to buff out those scratches yourself at home with the proper cloth. I honestly don't know if this material saves money on the production of these watches, or if Hesalite was chosen to be more historically accurate. At this point, I think that the economies of scale with Sapphire might make Sapphire the same cost, if not less. Now, on my modern, lead-free 7-inch wrist, these are good. Small for sure, but for their style it works. One thing that will make these watches look and feel larger would be a bracelet. Baltic does offer two bracelet options for these watches, and I think the Beads of Rice bracelet looks outstanding. True to style, and again, if you think 36mm might almost be too small for you, I think the bracelet will make the difference in the right direction. The bracelets here cost 60 euro more than the leather straps, that's about $65 at the moment. The mid case of the MR1 is brushed with the case back and the bezel being polished. The top of the lugs are also polished. It's all very well executed for the price, but I do think there could be an improvement here. I'd like to see the bezel radially brushed, concentric circle brushing. I'd also like to see the bezel angled, conical really, rather than totally flat. I think either one of these changes would make the bezel look a little less unfinished to me. And for some reason I feel like a jerk critiquing the hard work of small brands like Baltic. Big brands? F*** them. I don't care. But this is what you get when you send your watches to a shut-in with a loop. And for the same reason that I'm looking very closely, and these are from small brands, for those same reasons, I'm pretty impressed by the MR1 watches. $600 for a very elegant and thoughtful watch. Interesting too, these aren't your typical micro-brand vintage-inspired dive watches. These are kind of special. And to all those who will try to buy this watch online on June 1st, we salute you.